Today we're talking about uh, its pipe ramming project in Timber Gulch. Project's located about eight miles north of Jenner, approximate post mile 30 on Sonoma 1. That area is a narrow roadway right there on a bend. Highway 1 through that area is uh, uh, used primarily by tourists uh, going up along the north coast uh, before they cut back over to Highway 101 and loggers. Uh, there's quite a few bicyclists and recreational vehicles also. The um, particular environmental concern for the project area that it, it is within um, a creek setting um, with existing habitat for special status species. The culvert at Timber Gulch, it was just a projected 42 inch pipe. The conditions upstream and downstream, uh, originally it would continually get clogged. Maintenance had to stop on the shoulder and reach over and try to unclog it. At times when it was clogged and they couldn't unclog it, there'd be standing water, it would actually pool up, and there are several threats of actually washing out the roadway. Now downstream, the velocity through that 42-inch pipe was so fast that it was actually eroding out the creek banks. And uh, that erosion was actually working its way under the pipe outlet. And so we had to address not only upstream but downstream. The upstream end of that pipe uh, gets damaged every time there's a, a large log coming through. And it's, it's metal and the gauge thickness isn't such where it can withstand that force. Typical ways of replacing a culvert in a situation like this is uh, you'd look at the depth, uh, and it was roughly 30 feet deep, so a cut and cover operation, which you actually cut down to the culvert, remove it, and then uh, put the compacted embankment back. The usual open trench system, you'd have to detour the traffic around the whole project. Open face cut off-haul the, the spoil stockpile it, cut down to the level of your failing pipe, put that pipe in, and then once that's in, bring the material back and compacting it every lift until you get to the top and then pave. It took a while to actually figure out that we would need to do pipe ramming at this particular location. Uh, the deciding factor was really closing down the roadway. A typical cut and cover would have taken months. Uh, we would have had that roadway closed, and politically it just wasn't going to fly with the local residents. After the first pipe was rammed in, we'd leave it out four or five feet so we could have some room to work with it. We'd fly the next pipe in with the crane, line it up, try to get it in the rail system. And then once that was all lined up, and that could take three hours or six hours, then the welders went to work, and that would take them eight, 10 hours, sometimes 12, and then move the cones, the hammer, and the cones in front of it to fit the pipe. Uh, make sure that's all lined up, tighten it down, and then fire up the compressors and stand back, put your earmuffs on, and they would start hitting it lightly and until they get it up to speed and uh, of course would time uh, how long it took to get a foot and if things started slowing down, we'd see what the pressure was like, increase the pressure or reduce the pressure because we're getting into something harder or it was getting close to time for them to remove the material in the pipe. Removing the material inside the pipe was really interesting. Um, they had hired uh, four or five miners um, and you had to tag in and tag out because it's confined space. And so the miners would go in and they were able to use a bobcat, just small enough, scoop out some dirt come back out, spin around, put the dirt into a muck bucket that the crane would raise up, swing it over, and put it in a dump truck. And then they'd do the same thing again, hundreds of times. Sustainability to me is coming to a site 
uh, looking at purpose and need, fixing everything that needs to be fixed, uh, minimal impact to the users, minimal, minimal impact to the environment, and getting out of there in a the minimal amount of time. I mean, sustainability element was huge here because maintenance has probably crossed this location off their list during very large storms. I mean, we stabilized the upstream embankment, but a very large retaining wall there, so we stabilized that. Downstream, we essentially eliminated the potential for future scour on the creek banks and creek bottom. Extensive rock slope protection there. Uh, sustainability, uh, again, a, a, another positive was the diameter of that pipe allows for wildlife crossing. Some of the other sustainability issues were uh, the detour was fairly extensive, 13 mile uh, drive around. It wasn't nearly as scenic. I don't think bicyclists would have taken it. Very steep grades. I think the truckers, that was again a major consideration for not using it. Uh, and again, when you're talking sustainability, you're talking about reduction of greenhouse gases, uh, a lot of extra time, a lot of extra gas spent, uh, and it was just a bad idea. Uh, a lot of times when you use th those detours for extended periods, you got to go back and repave them too. Uh, you don't want to use a county road that's really not, not designed for that kind of truck traffic. Some of the sustainable aspects of this particular installation method would include um, minimizing the use of materials. Uh, basically, you didn't have to regrade the pavement or the road, so you would actually minimize the amount of um, AC you haul onto the site. By doing this, we remove far fewer trees. It would have been a shame to remove any more than we absolutely had to. Uh, we actually restored the creek, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful site now. We're not gonna have to revisit it anytime soon. Uh, large diameter pipe, uh, very thick gauge of welded steel. Uh, I don't foresee any problems in the, in the near future.